Hello, my dear church boys, and welcome back to St. Robert's Day Game Podcast. And uh, this episode is a start of something a little bit different. I'm doing a, a series of short podcast episodes where I'm talking to guys I know from Day Game, guys I coached before, and I'm talking to them months or even years after they've gotten coaching and kind of showcasing how different guys who learn Day Game are doing now. And this and in this podcast episode, the guest is Mario, and this is one year after I worked with him last summer. And after working with him last summer in Budapest, we recorded the podcast episode number 45 about how hard learning day games sometimes can be and what Mario went through to start getting real results. After that, he joined me to Mexico for several months when he did great and was part of episode 65 where me... Mr. T, David, and Mario were talking about day game in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. Here you'll find out about uh, how his game has progressed and what new things he has learned since then. Mario is a great guy and I've been with him to several cities and I've day gamed with him in several cities. And also in October, me and a few other great day gamers who you know from our Telegram day game church group chat where we have over 200 guys from all over the world. We're planning to go to a nice beach city in Spain. I have a birthday, Mr. T has his birthday, and Paolo has his birthday as well. So we're going there to celebrate and hang out for uh, hang out there for a while. If you want to join us, there are three coaching spots available in that city in October. So sign up for one of them and just can come hang out with us. After all, that's how all of us met each other. Uh, if you want to find out more, just send me an email to robert at strobert.blog. That is robert at strobert.blog. And now, the conversation with Mario. Well, hello, my friend Mario. <laughs> this is Luigi. What's <laughs> Luigi? Hey, bro. So, where the fuck are you in the world? Uh, I'm still here in Europe, uh, waiting, uh, you know, for summer, going around, uh, probably going to um, uh, to Spain very soon. Oh, so you're still in the shitty, tiny country that you're leaving for good, I hope. Yep. Okay, so, well, it's... Uh... It's been a while since you appeared on a podcast. Last time you were on a podcast, I think it was around New Year's when we put out the podcast about uh, Playa del Carmen, Mexico, with mm -hmm. me, you, and Mr. T, David, and maybe there was someone else, but I don't know. Oh, maybe, maybe Paolo, I think, wasn't on a podcast. But yeah, no, so, so, so I'm doing a, a weird video, a, a weird podcast series where I'm catching up with the guys that. I used to game with or, or that I've coached and, and kind of catching up with friends and seeing how guys are doing some months or years after after coaching, after hanging out. And, and we worked with you twice, actually. But when we really, really worked, that was like a year ago, last year in um, mm -hmm. in uh, Budapest, because the first time we worked in a lockdown hit and everything was like COVID stopped you from day gaming. You took a four month break and you, you decided, fuck it, I'm going to kickstart the game day game again with 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 some coaching instead of instead of slowly getting back into it uh, on your on your own so and it's, it's been a year uh, we had a blast in mexico but you had some fun adventures in mexico after we recorded the podcast so maybe we'll talk about that we'll talk about what's what's going on in your life what's going on with your game how game is now uh just to kind of let people know who this mario guy in the chat making funny comments all the time is. Uh, <laughs> uh, That's great. So uh, you're, you're back in Europe. You've been back in Europe. You kind of came back in the same time, early spring or like late spring. And, and you've been mm -hmm. kind of hopping all, all over the place. Uh, so where, where have you day gamed uh, after Mexico? Uh, I stayed mainly in Spain after Mexico because it was the only country that was allowing people from outside the EU to get in with just a test. So spent, yeah, the vast majority of my time there. Uh, I've been in a couple of places. So it's definitely been uh, uh, an interesting uh, welcome back to Europe. 
you know it's coming back from a place where you have all the freedoms in the world uh, everything is going great you know and then oh you have to wear a mask oh restaurants close at five oh this and that it was it was quite an awakening you know and the great luck that we had to be there well, yeah, I'm, I'm right now in Ukraine, and the only time you have to put on a mask here is not only when you not when you are in a grocery store, but when you are at the grocery store at the checkout. Only at the okay. checkout, like they, they don't care about the masks anywhere here. Like no one gives a fuck almost in any store, almost uh, wherever we go, no one asks us to put on a mask. Uh, mm -hmm. So you've taken mostly in Spain. So most of your dating's actually been in Spanish, right? Uh, yeah, I've been lucky that they speak the language, so it doesn't bother me to do it either in English or, or Spanish. Yeah, that's why I'm learning it now, because I, I, I do want to spend this winter again in Central America, maybe somewhere in South America, so I'm learning the language to be able to take him there. I will mm -hmm. definitely not, not <laughs> go back to the places where we were last year, but... <laughs> I have a few other. You remember when I was telling you, dude, I know Latin America quite well. Uh, you need to speak Spanish if you want to maximize your opportunities. You were like, nah, you know, yeah, and people, they all study English at school. I'm like, uh, yeah, but it's, yeah. it's impossible. Like, I can't learn <laughs> Spanish in a, in a month. You need, you need like a year to, to at least get to any fucking level. And now I'm started having classes, like one-on-one -on -one classes with a, with, a, with a teacher in, in Ukraine, some guy who's a native speaker. I don't remember which country he's from, but but uh, yeah, so that's been going pretty okay. Uh, we'll see whether I can do a date that's fully in, in Spanish uh, by the next spring. That would be the goal. So how, how was day game in Spain compared to day game in Mexico, to all the shit we did there? Uh, I mean, depends always where you go, because I've been in, in the mainland and in the islands. And of course, in the islands, uh, what I noticed the, oh, depends a lot on the vibe that the city has, which is quite an important thing. Because let's say I was in Barcelona and the masks on, everybody was running like crazy, and I wasn't used to that anymore. So it took me like, I would say, a couple of weeks to get back to the get back on the grind while you know when visiting the islands for example it was much more relaxed beach vibe everyone was chilled so nobody was wearing the mask outside uh, or, or even indoors if i have to be honest little people didn't care at all so it was completely different also um you know the big city mindset uh, uh, people going on with their lives is different than uh, when you are in a touristical place and maybe people are there in holiday, you know? I mean, we've seen or, it as well so, in, in Playa del Carmen. So, so I assume Barcelona was harder than, than, than whatever islands you went to. Yeah, it was quite interesting because I was approaching girls and they were like holding their bag and they were like, what do you want? I was like, oh shit, I'm no longer used to this stuff, you know? So did, did so, you get any lays in Barcelona or not? Uh, unfortunately, no, because um, my two best leads, uh, unfortunately, they, or one, funny enough, was, one was Argentinian. I was like, oh man. Gotta love the country. Uh, they all left the, the very day later. So, okay. you know, so, super so, so on. So Barcelona, no good. luck. Then you went to the mm -hmm. islands. So we're, we're, mm -hmm. we're free. Canary Islands, yeah? Or, or... Correct. So how was it there? How, how, how was the game there? Uh, it was much more relaxed, but of course, uh, depends where do you go. If you stay in the main city, you have more volume. Uh, if you go more towards the touristical places, you have more old people. I mean, the canneries are famous for, for retired Germans and, and Italians. Um, but there are still some good options. Uh, they some decent amount of sets. Mainly, you have to do beach game. That's well, the name of the game there. Uh, got a couple of notches from that, you know, with uh, one set. Funny enough, uh, he started on the other side of the world. <laughs> you, you remember the story, right? What was uh, it, like a Russian chick or something? Yes, this Russian girl met in, uh, met in Mexico, you know. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so, so, so you're doing much better on beaches where, where people are way, way more relaxed and chilled out than you were doing in bigger cities. That's kind of understandable. I can, I can, I can kind of understand that idea that cities are harder. That's why, you know, not even harder, but just I think it's it's not as interesting uh, in, in bigger cities. I think cities. it's just people are busy. I think it's just different. Shit. Yeah, as well, you know. Plus, it always depends like the amount of energy, uh, commitment that you want to put. Where days like where. The weather was bad, so I was like, ah, f- not gonna out. Or maybe I was hanging out with friends, and hey, you know, you just want to talk about I don't know, cryptos instead of going out and you know walking ten kilometers on the streets. So I guess he also has an influence on that. Okay. Uh, so where else have you gamed? After Barcelona and, and Islands, uh, no. Then um, I uh, went back back home here where I live, a uh, small island. You know, it's there's not really much to do. Small but it's island, just like, uh, which, which you, you have to. A listener has to be pretty dumb to not plus one to to put like two and two together to put, like understand what's an island and your accent. <laughs> oh, it's like oh well, you know. <laughs> it's Iceland. It's obviously Iceland. It's obviously Iceland. <laughs> obviously Iceland, you know. But my Viking Northern accent uh, clearly tells the tale, you know. But uh, <laughs> guys, don't, don't don't go there. Don't go there, guys. No, no jokes aside. I mean, when I came back, of course, I was motivated because uh, I knew I was gonna spend a lot of time here kind of commitments uh, going on so I started uh, day gaming hard uh, mask on and everything I still got three notches out of that so can can't really complain about it okay so you got a few notches in the islands like in Spanish islands you got a few notches in in your island where, where you're right now uh, mm. So, so compare comparing that to Mexico because I think Mexico is where you did the most game, and we were hanging out in Playa del Carmen. That was that was kind of like your training ground. You you did your coaching, and then you came on a trip, and it's like okay, and we were hanging out, and that's where you were kind of getting your your reps in, uh, so to say. So mm-hmm. after after learning, or like you learned in you learned in Budapest with me, and, and then we spent so much time and, and did so much so many reps in in in, in Mexico, and, and now you're back in in Europe. So what what did you have to adjust in your game? How was Europe, those islands in Europe, different from from game in Mexico? Uh, I had to be a little bit more, more present uh, while while in the set. You know, be a little be more technical. Perhaps I would say, because let's be honest, you know, while in Playa or, you know, on the islands at the beach, you're just like the good vibes guy, you know, like make people feel good, like uh, just smile and have this like uh, uh, carefree attitude, like, you know, the good life will last forever and you just have to suck it up and enjoy while in the city, there is. Um, I notice you have to be a little bit more um, present and constant on point. Uh, not do. While you can get away with stupid stuff that you do or say in a holiday place, uh, in the city is brutal. Like uh, frame tests come your way. Like, uh, oh, why did you stop me? Uh, what do you want from me? And these kind of things, you know, which. Are, are okay, you know, they happen all the time, you just n- know how to deal with them, but you need to have a more ironclad uh, frame, be more present and know what you do, and also arm yourself with a little bit more patience, because, I don't know, in a big city, yeah, you could literally face the complete majority of humanity, meaning like you could face anything happening. While, you know, in a holiday spot, uh, people, they're just much to to have fun and, and, and to party. So a lot of their normal life problems will not come out in their daily lives. And that's what I also noticed. Like you have the person that, you know, when you stop her, it's like, yeah, she's enjoying it, but 
uh, maybe I had a bad day at the office so her mood is not really engaging and not giving you a strong hook uh, but maybe on text gets better I don't know you just need to have these three things that at least what I notice more so basically the game is very similar, but you have to be more grounded uh, and you have to understand that like you will get more negative reactions in a city just because well, it's a city and people have shit going on. It's, it's not like a holiday town where everyone's just to have fun. Um, so uh, what, what do you think in your experience? Because you learned in, uh, well, we started in Prague and then you did a lot of, you did a little bit of game in Prague on your own. And then we did mm-hmm. in Buda, we worked in Budapest, and, and then you gamed a little bit on your own, and then we went to Playa del Carmen, and and Playa del Carmen was a place where there were a bunch of day gamers. We, we were like a group of friends hanging out together, doing shit together, and then also day gaming. So, what do you think is a better learning experience? Doing it just like you and me in in Budapest, or 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 a bunch of day gamers hanging out in 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 the same city having fun going for beers together and then at the same time learning the game so what what do you think was a better what do you what, yeah I what think, do you think is a better place for learning i think the second because um uh how can i say i'm, I'm a big fan of uh submerging yourself when you want to learn something so like your whole life revolves around it and when it was you and i it was yeah i could you know get access to you but while you while we were in mexico we could speak with you uh mr t like you could confront yourself with other people and also like work on your personality as well because uh, it, you just see where are your deficiencies uh, oh okay so maybe it could be a little bit more charismatic or I could be a little bit more motivated to do things and be more constant on the grind. So, and let's say hanging out with a group of friends is always fun. So, I get, yeah, that that will definitely. I was trying to think if I would have the same amount of experience. Okay, what would be best uh, to kickstart it? Uh, and I would say going out with a group of friends anytime. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you you did get a great regular in Mexico. Do you, do you care to share a bit about that story? And and because I think that's a great story of of like not just sleeping with someone, but actually hanging out and and and, and really having a good time with someone. Yeah, because that also changed a little bit my perspective on on things in life, uh, like what I want uh, uh, and what matters to me. And I found that, yeah, don't get me wrong, you know, new notches is great and everything, but I mean, after that, you're, you're, you're still the same person the morning after, you know, nothing really has changed. Uh, you, maybe you pat yourself a little bit on the back, but that's it. Well, I mean, meanwhile, I was there, I was with this person and I felt really what it means like to have a partner in crime sort of thing. So the adventures that you can go together, the things that you do, the experiences that you have, it's, it made my, that's why I'm scared a little bit, perhaps to ever go back there, because uh, what, what if it, it, it's not gonna feel the same getting back there? I mean, it, I was coming from a lockdown Europe, uh, have great friends there, great weather, uh, having, you know, this relationship. So the odds of getting the same feeling back is extremely low. And after that, uh, I had uh, another sort of mini relationship and it made my time so sweet that uh, I was just like afraid, okay, so maybe I'm a relationship guy, you know? Instead, I just realized, look, there is a times where you want to have, you know, just fun, hang out, or you have other commitments, but there is also value in understanding, okay, now game is a tool that they can use it just in order to uh, experience more out of life. It's not just the same grind as like, yeah, swamp, swamp, wow, that's, that's great, don't get me wrong, but life is just a little bit more uh, of that. There is so many things that you can experience, things that I, I didn't even know I was, I was able to experience, you know? So I guess it was uh, a, a, an amazing experience. 
Yeah. Yeah, because you had a lot of fun. Like you, you went to that Holbosch Island with her and you, you were hanging out with her there and you did a lot of other stuff with her and, and you know, exploring different uh, <laughs> different dating plus <laughs> topics. <laughs> different <laughs> 18 posted, plus of... You posted your a picture of your drawer in, in one of the group chats, main chat or small, one of the smaller ones, I don't remember, but there was a picture of all the stuff in your drawer that you were using with her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, and I was teaching you like some like a single column tie with ropes, I remember that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, so then you, you evolve, uh, you go to a double column tie, yeah. there you go. You, you learn the other restriction. Uh, uh, it, was, it was definitely like, a, like I say, uh, it's a, an experience, you know? And yeah. you learn from that, uh, well, of course, you know, uh, it's, it's been, uh, it's been a great time. I have to say it. I mean, it's always, that's what I realized that actually when, when hanging out with day gamers, what I enjoy more than doing day, just day game trips, like going to, for a month or someplace, I actually enjoy going to places and kind of setting up like a, like a, not like a party, but like having several guys going there and what we just did in. Uh, in, 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 in Ukraine, this was fucking amazing because uh, I came here and then Mr. T came here and like six students came here over two months and like, well, one guy is arriving in like a few days, this is the sixth guy. And, and, mm -hmm. and I realized that setting up events where I'm in a place for a longer period of time and, and then I have students who don't, and a lot of them don't want to come in just for the coaching days. They want to come in for a longer period of time. And so the, even here, what we were doing is uh, I had guys, I had two guys coming here from US and, and others from other places, but uh, they were coming for like a month or two months, however long everyone could, like a guy, some guys could come for like a week, some could come for like three weeks, some could come for a month or two, uh, mm -hmm. and we we're just spreading out the coaching sessions over longer longer period of time, mm -hmm. and we're just hanging out, and so they're not just getting coaching, they're in this city hanging out with other day gamers they're day gaming but also doing other shit like going for beers going for food like exploring very different kind of local places and i, I just kind of start to enjoy this camaraderie more where, where i'm not just coaching but i'm also introducing day gamers to each other and and that's why we're doing what we're doing in october because the october plan yeah. is my my birthday is in october and mr t's birthday is in october and paulo's birthday is in october uh, so, oh my and, god! And, 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 and yeah, so so there's a fucking plan. Like uh, I'm definitely going to Spain uh, in October for a month. Uh, uh, I don't know about a city yet, and, and I don't want to make the city public just as with Ukraine. Yeah, it's 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 gonna be public for for mm. whoever wants decides to join us. And I don't I actually don't know the city yet, but but the idea is the same. Like I want to go there for a month and. We'll see whether Mr. T joins. We will see whether whether Paolo joins. I, I think Paolo will probably join. Mr. T is likely to join as well. Uh, and I assume you're joining us, right? For for at mm -hmm. least some time. I don't know exactly for for how long because I have a couple of commitments. But definitely, I'll, I'll pass by. Definitely. Definitely, you'll pass by when we when we throw a party for three birthdays in one day. <laughs> Jesus. No, that, that's for so, sure. Look, I think so, it's um. Yes, go ahead. Uh, no, no. So I'm just saying, it's, I think it's going to be fucking lit. And, and I have friends coming over from Latvia. I, my parents, like at least my mom said she's probably going to come and my sister and my brother. <laughs> it's going to be like day gamers and family. And, and it's, it's going to be a lit fucking event. Uh, I, I will take, uh, to whoever is listening, I will take three students there. So if you want to join us, if you want to join me, Mario, and probably Mr. T, probably Paolo, uh, and if you want to come and hang out with us there and get some day game coaching and, and, and join our multi-birthday party, then shoot me an email to Robert at St. Robert that blog, uh, dot blog and I'll send you all the details about coaching there. Um, yeah, I don't know. What else? What else? What else? What else? So what's your plan? Well, what's your That's one thing I want to know. What's your so So you're doing Spain. What's up, what's up, what's yeah, up? Yeah, but I was actually thinking, uh, uh, you know, because with my mind, I went back when we done coaching and everything, that, like, people coming for this kind of, uh, let's say, trips, because it's not yes. just coaching, it's, it's a whole thing. It's actually better because, you know, 
when you get coaching in three days, there's a lot to unpack. Uh, and let's be honest, it's fucking brutal because you work a lot. Uh, I mean, uh, I, you know, I'm a gym guy, so I don't have a problem with, uh, with, with fitness and everything. But I remember I was like, man, I cannot even go to the gym since I'm so depleted mentally and physically. But if you spread it across and you have a good time, you know, when you're in a better state of mind, you learn things easier. So actually, I think it's a very cool idea. Of course. So what's your plan after Spain? What, what's your... Um, I'm going to stay here in Europe because I have some work commitments. Uh, probably like last year till middle of December. And wow. when it's, it's going to get cold, no matter where you go, probably I'll, uh, I'll go to Mexico. Uh, I have to decide if Mexico or uh, Latin America, but you know, with this uh, with this bug that uh, we have uh, we have been battling since almost two years, uh, it's it's very hard to predict which country is going to be open, how it's going to be the restrictions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, but yeah, because yeah. if miracles happen and Argentina opens, then I'm going to Argentina. <laughs> but we'll see. So my plan is I'm doing Spain for October, and then mm-hmm. end of October, early November, I'm going to Mexico, mm-hmm. uh, not to Playa, and I'm taking a few months off from day game. I, I probably I don't think I'll be coaching anyone in Mexico, but then mid uh, mid or late November, two weeks later, I'm going to the US and A. Uh, Ooh, okay. Lovely city that's. Starting to appear on the radar in our chats. Uh, it's not really on the radar anywhere else. Uh, and I've heard mm-hmm. many good things from the guys there. I know a few, a few guys who game there. It sounds really good. And I have a few guys interested there in coaching. So I'll, I'll be going to USA and coach a few guys there. And then mid December, I'll probably be back in Mexico and think of a place to set up a New Year's party. Probably, probably a bunch of guys from US will join. I assume David will join. I assume Mr. T will join, and, and probably a bunch of other guys. Probably someone will come over from Europe, and 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 yeah. But that that's a whole different kind of. After that, who the fuck knows? Well, nice, nice. I'm glad to hear you're you're getting laid. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that uh, day game. You've adapted your day game to to back to Europe because I remember you were having some challenges when when you just came back and it's good to see that you adopted uh, mm-hmm. well dude, yep. nice talking to you thank you for sharing your experience after coming back to europe and uh, and and your opinions about coaching or traveling or or anything else oh it's a pleasure you take care okay thank you thank you yeah I hope you enjoyed this conversation and learned something from Mario. If you want to join us on our wonderful trip in October, then send me an email to robert at saintrobert.blog. If you watch this on YouTube or listen to this on YouTube, then please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. If you listen to this on uh, Apple Podcasts, then leave this podcast a five-star review. Or if this is on Spotify, then just follow my podcast. All these things simply help me reach more people and help more people take care of their dating life. Thank you for listening and bye.